What is going on, everybody? We just got done watching episode six of Vox Machina into the Rhyme Cliff. As always, this is Jorge. We got Mike with me. And in case you haven't gotten the gist of it, these are spoiler filled. They are not spoiler free. Um, but yeah, let's just let's just dive right into this one because this one was was wild. So this one. Um, we kind of well, actually, before we even start, like, what what are your thoughts of this episode? Because I'm still like baffled. <laughs> I, I I got a lot of stuff I really wanted in this one. Like, I like as someone who has to come up with like encounters all the time, I'm always looking for encounters that aren't just straight brawls. Yeah. So like this episode gives you one of those. Uh, it gives you an epic fight between two huge yeah. monsters. Um, and then you get some crazy crap going on with Grog, and we get to see another vestige. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. briefly, we get another vestige. That is true. Yeah, I was like, well, this, you get you get also jumps get, off like just, super crazy because we got that we get like Grog in an arena, just like wrecking dudes. Yeah. You're seeing people's heads get split open. We're getting guts like flying everywhere. He's covered in blood. Um, clearly. Uh, his sword is like taking its toll and he like wakes he like turns and then he sees that it's like uh the rest of vox machina like with like all cut up and stuff yeah, and yeah. for like the briefest of seconds i was like oh crap did he do that in his sleep yeah well that <laughs> that's exactly what i because <laughs> at first like you see that worse and i was like nice i was like he's he's just getting it but i thought it was a flashback until you see like i kind of saw the sword and i was like no, it's not a flashback. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, when you see that, it's all those, when it's with the entire Vox Machina team, like that was, yeah, that was wild. But luckily he wakes up. Um, I do kind of think we are starting to see a major shift in, I would say, his his lack of control over this weapon. Yeah. Um, it, it's definitely starting to, to take its toll. Um on this one for sure but i feel like this episode went by so fast but there was mm -hmm. so much to like digest in it and it's just because it's like constant action basically so obviously they they start trekking along to um find the the sphinx and i thought it was so i think percy will forever kind of feel bad about <laughs> i hate saying it this way about killing somebody by mistake yeah. but uh, getting someone killed yeah there there we go for getting, <laughs> for getting but it's like i thought it was it was cute how instantly she was like yeah it's cold and he like takes off his jacket puts it on her and he's like i'm fine but you can tell yeah. the dude was like <laughs> yeah freezing but i i found it um like i just i find it neat how all these characters are starting to get like all these little dynamics with within the group. Um, and this was in this episode, finally, uh, Pike and uh, Scandalin, like Pike brings it up to Scandalin, like Grok has been acting weird, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then I think they catch him talking to his knife or to his sword, but he starts, he's telling them that he was talking to the tree. Yeah. It's like, like I love Grog. It's like such like a kid thing to do. Like yeah. you, you know, like did you take this? And they're like, no. And it's like behind their back type of stuff. Yeah. Um. So it, it's just I think it's interesting seeing what happens through that. But um, the way that they find the opening to to where the Sphinx is. So while she's flying, is was she using like? Because I know she's a rogue, correct? No, she's a... Correct. What do you call them? Uh, she's a ranger. Okay, so how was she able to spot that? So what I was getting... What I got from it was... Um, 
you know those so they encounter like this obelisk that's just sticking yeah. straight out of the ground that has like this warning like flee from here yeah monsters descend from the heavens etc um and but like so decidedly uh vex flies up on her broom to try to get a better lay of the land and she sees that there are like a bunch of these different like pillars that are kind of like sticking up out of the ground at various different angles and she like kind of flies around and i think it's like one of those tricks where like if you look through the space that is created by like the intersection of one of those pillars, you can uh, then see like the entrance to the okay the uh, the rhyme cleft. Okay, no, no, yeah, because for me, I was when I was looking at that, I was like, she doesn't have like detect magic or yeah, or like that. so it just it threw me off. But <laughs> um, that would be something like in game that would have to be like represented by like a bunch of investigation checks, I think. Oh God, yeah, and you, you would be rolling very high in order to <laughs> yeah. But you know, obviously they they find it, and I think it's um, I think it's really neat how that that whole, I guess kind of, I don't know if it's a bad a challenge. I think, uh, I think it's interesting how that whole challenge kind of plays out, where, you know, the Sphinx basically gives him gives them three options, um. And then, I mean, and I'll give you 100% credit, like, you called it almost immediately of how they would have to defeat the Sphinx, um, which was which was hilarious, how it ended I mean, up. The challenge, well, he gives out different challenges, like, like you can fight, like, the Gorgons, you can fight something else, I can't even remember what he said. Yeah. And then, or you can wound me. And then I was like, oh, okay, I like this. It's <laughs> Well, and, uh, and again, like in my head, like I was like, this can easily be like a non-combat encounter because like everyone's gonna want to like, okay, well we'll wound him. We don't have to kill him. Like we can just all you have to do is land a hit. Yeah. Um, but like you watch as like subsequently no one can get a hit. Even Vax, who's got a vestige, can't can't yeah. land a hit. So that that was a question that I had. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing there's different levels to these vestiges, basically. Like it, is the Sphinx considered, I don't want to say stronger than like the Raven, but is it one of those things where because we're in his world, like he kind of controls that that area better than anybody else? I think this is, again, another time where the uh, the show is taking artistic license over like what mechanically can happen in the game. Okay. Um, I would think so that like this is definitely its lair and any monster is more powerful in its lair, but usually not in a way that, that they were showing. Um, what I would also think is that, like, you know, like, because, like, a regular Sphinx, like, real talk, I think it's, like, challenge rating five. So, like, a level five party should be able to take it out, which is, I think they're, like, level, they're probably, like, level six or seven by now. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Uh, so I think it's just more artistic license to show you, like, just how powerful this Sphinx's challenge can be, okay. um, and that it's that it's not about the physicality of the nature, like because he's you know like he said he's lived for millennia and never known pain. Yeah, no, that was and and for those of you in case you don't do D and D, just to let you know what Mike said by like level five and all that and and you know like level six. So throughout D and D, you basically start with like a level one person, and throughout different adventures, you keep increasing. Um, your stat points per se, and you keep building up your character. So, you know, you go from level one, I think it goes all the way up to level 20, right? Yeah, you can go beyond, but there's that's that's definitely deep gameplay. Yeah. And I mean if you're if you're beyond level 20, you I mean you've been playing for quite some time. Yeah. Um <laughs> that's the nicest way I'll put it. But no, it's so it just to give you guys like a, a heads up on that on that terminology in case you had no idea. Um but I, I find it I found it very neat kind of the order that they went in, um, you know, because obviously you have Vax trying to always prove that he's, you know, the best. Um, and even he was saying with my speed and, and like with my new abilities and even like he just got smacked out real quick. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was interesting how when Grog went, uh, the Sphinx ended up using the same words that... Um, that one dude uh, he met in the arena. Breaker, yeah, yeah. Well, he was like, you know, 
you don't even know where, like, show me where your power comes from. And yeah, he, like, would you say? And he gets blasted away. <laughs> he gets broke <clears throat> for a minute. Um, and then here you kind of, you know, because at that point, I think it was, it wasn't Keelif. It was, um, who was it that said, forget the rules, let's just all attack him? Was that Keelif? No, I think it was Keelif. Yeah, it was Keelif. Okay. And then, like, her, Pike, and Percy run at it. And then, like, Scanlan stays back and is like, hey, wait, can we do this some other way? Yeah. And um, Pike reads it as, like, cowardice or, like, self-serving. Yeah. Um, oh, also, when, like, when they had caught, like, Grog with the sword, talking to his sword, like, she was like, do you, th- have you ever notice something wrong with Grog? And Scanlan's like, well, Grog's real dumb. It's not hard to tell. Like, he yeah. blows it off. And then he makes another joke about, like, boys talking to their swords and like you know pike again is like kind of disappointed by scanlan and just says like why can't you ever have like a sincere moment or like just and, serious type of stuff yeah yeah and it's like one of those things where like you know your comic relief you are constantly using comedy and like uh depraved jokes to like kind of uh change the subject or redirect attention so that you don't so you can feel comfortable and you know, him being called on that is just another thing where she kind of sees right through him and sees how uncomfortable he is by not, like, having any of those connections that he really wants. Yeah, no, that's that's very true, and I think that's something that's showing up kind of more and more. It's like Scandalin is, like, he's not a fighter, you know? Yeah. He's, he's definitely your lover. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the lover of all things. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I found it, you know, it's I found it neat how everyone kind of went and he just kind of, in a way he was cowardly because he just kind of hid behind a rock and it's just like, I wonder if he can see me or if he knows I'm here. But um, it it wasn't until, you know, like the Sphinx used certain wordplay that Scanlan, what, like, I think it just clicked for him, mm-hmm. um, which I thought was awesome because then it goes into this like 80s ballad of amazingness <laughs> yeah you just it's like one of those songs about how like you can't be with your person and it, it wrecks you because you're you just you're so lonely and you're, you're you yeah. just want that connection and the sphinx is like well damn it dude you got me <laughs> you hurt my heart yeah <laughs> which is and i think that the neat part is so uh after that happens, you kind of see everyone kind of reappear in the um, like in, in the castle. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like the Sphinx and Scandalin are just like chatting it up, like having a conversation. They're like, they're writing a song. They're writing yeah. a song. And they're like, how did we get here? <laughs> and he's like, what rhymes with I? Yeah. Which, yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just like, it's so funny. And I thought it was, it was really neat how when they saw that it was like Scandalin that ended up saving them, like all their reactions, like W. Yeah, they're all like, the fuck? Yeah, it was like, how is this possible? Yeah. So, it, you know, I, I definitely found that to be super cool. And, you know, in in my head, I was like, oh, this is such a an awesome, like, place to, like, cut the episode, you know? Like, they kind of accomplished their mission. But this being Vox Machina, they... Why would they do that? So they give you a peek because, like, Scanlon's like, you're supposed to tell us where the next, where all the other vestiges yeah. are. It's like, kind of. I'm gonna give you a vestige called, was it Myth Carver? I believe it's so. Like yes, yeah. amazing sword, and it's like Myth Carver is linked to all legends and lore, and therefore you will be able to know where all the other vestiges through yeah. this because it's connected to them. So he uses it. And he's able to see the next message of divergence, which looks to be like some kind of gnarly looking bow, like in a gross part of the Feywild. Yeah. And I mean, that place looks like a, a trip because I, it, he was saying how it like the waters were running back, like we're running up like the waterfalls. Mm-hmm. Um, so that just I can only imagine how, how trippy that location is going to be. But then he also sees uh, where like these gauntlets are that. You know, it's like I, I'm guessing they're related to. They have to be. Well, they they're either related to Grog or they're they're Grog's like people. So like yeah. Uh, so Goliaths travel in something called the herd. Yeah. 
And so, or a herd, they, they travel in herds. And so, like, um, you get to see, like, this, they, 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 he says, oh, I'm, I'm looking at Western, it's one of the other cities. Yeah. Um, and it's, like, overrun with, like, Goliaths, or he says, like, people that look like Grog. And you see, like, one of them has, like, those wicked gauntlets on. And, like, oh, it looks a lot like Grog. And Grog's just like, oh, man, it probably doesn't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, we've seen Grog as, like, normally, like, fearlessly and oftentimes stupidly running into battle. Like, at the, like, usually at the cost of his own, like, life or health or yeah. whatever. And just the idea of the thought of this person right. wearing these gauntlets and he's instantly like well let's 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 not do that so like what scares grog enough for that to happen yeah and that's that's what i'm i'm kind of intrigued with because it um and this was almost uh in the vision that that grog had was it in the beginning of the episode mm -hmm. like he had a vision and it, it almost felt like it was like uh, a goliath talking to him or like oh, yeah. it, it, he says, like you you made the the, the herd, herd crowd. Yeah, yeah, which there has like there has to be some type of connection there, which is I'm all for that. So that I, I can just see that becoming like a huge battle of some yeah. sort, which would be super cool. Um it's a very it's a very good battle when that oh, happens. Okay. So now so now we know it's gonna happen. That's um, good. The all of that is interrupted by the black dragon showing up, yeah, uh, dripping acid, and he thanks them for like drawing him to a vestige so that he can take it so that no one can beat the Chroma Conclave. And what ensues is an epic fight. Oh, between, God, yeah. between the Sphinx, the black dragon, and like members of Vox Machina, they're doing their best, but it's like a it's an ancient black dragon we're talking about here and it's hard for them to fight that thing um we get to see some wicked stuff like uh it's breath completely just like obliterating the shield that the sphinx does and just like yeah. dousing him in acid um grog grog sword finally gets like some blood on it and it turns him into like a supreme berserker yeah because he's not like a dude just a single dude going at a ancient black dragon like that and his like eyes are like bugging out, like the his irises have like shrank to like complete red dots, yeah. and uh, he's just like just wanting more and more battle, more and more blood. Um, we see at one point um, the dragon like curls its like tail around and picks up Myth Carver because like Scanlan drops it at one point. Yeah. And so he's got it, and like so they're fighting. And like it's like taunting Grog to come at him, and Grog, of course, wants and like wants to do it. But like Vox Machina realizes, like, hey, we can't handle this, we need to get out of here. So Keyleth is casting like some kind of plane shift spell to get them out of there. And they're all lining up, and like the only one who's staying there is Grog because like he's completely consumed with bloodlust because of the sword. And so he rushes at the black dragon, but Pike tries to get him to stop and that's like to her folly because he just runs at her and he just like impales her on that sword like it's sticking out of her back and she's like oh yeah. and then everyone freaks out grog freaks out is this finally like the the straw that breaks the camel's back in terms of what grog is willing to take for the sword i don't i don't know and that's the i think what what i found very interesting was once he realized that he he stabbed her his pupils like went back to normal instantly. Yeah. And it's almost like if it if it hit him. So um and this is obviously episode six, halfway through point. So episode three, we had one semi death. Now we basically have another because I mean well actually will Pike will Pike be able to heal herself or can I, I'm very fight? curious as to that uh, as the answer to that too, because if she's not, the only other healer is like because they get split up. Yeah, like the plane ship splits them up. You got Scanlan, Grog, and Pike on one end of the thing, and then you've got Vex, Vax, Percy, and Keyleth on, on a, in yeah. another. Well, yeah. you see Vex, Vax, 
Percy and Keyleth in the, excuse me, in the Fey realm, but you don't really know where Scanlan, Pike, and Grog are. Yeah. You just know that if Pike can't heal herself, Keyleth is conceivably very far away. Yeah, which is, I can't see them get, like, Pike is just, like, she's just such a, an integral part of, of this team. Which would be su- it would suck if they get rid of her. Um, but no, it's it, yeah, like the way that they ended this episode, like it's just like, oh, yeah, you know. Um, so I am excited to see what what happens. Um, obviously, we know where you know. I'll say half of the team is. We have no idea where where the other half went because even when they were teleporting or whatever, you know, she was doing you kind of see that the three of them just kind of like veer off and then they mm-hmm. just like disappear. Yeah. Um, so that will be interesting to see where, where they end up. But now nah, this, this episode was just, was killer, man. Like I am, yeah. I am still, I but, yeah, I'm like, but seeing Grog also like at a hundred percent berserker level, like mm-hmm. that's terrifying. Yeah. Like he was, it's like he literally has no control over over his options, and it's just like I just need blood, mm-hmm. which is which is neat to see how that's going to to play out. Now I do wonder with that sword. Obviously, like it could never be satisfied. I'm guessing. We forgot to talk about that last episode. Is that Grog actually asks it? Like he's Grog yeah. is at least smart enough to be like, "Hey, are you ever going to get like satisfied with all the blood that we give you?" Yeah, it's like, "Are you going to be full ever?" Yeah, and he's like, "No, nah, dude, never." That's and then he goes, "I can relate." Yeah, but I just I find that just like interesting because I would think, and maybe this is just like you know simple way. It's like human blood, let's say, is worth X amount, but it's like if you're getting like god like blood you know like legendary like ancient monster like that should be worth x more um but no it's it's gonna be i think it's gonna be interesting to see where this goes um, well man we almost forgot there's a point where grog says like i'm trying to get you blood but we can't i can't find any and he's like well if you can't find me any i'll just take it yes. and it shrivels his arm yes oh god yeah it gives him like the the old man little arm syndrome. Yeah. Um, which that's insane to me that I guess I I didn't know what negative effect it could do. Cause I think before he did that, or no, once he shrunk his arm, Grog actually just cut his hand. Yeah. He was so holding on to the blade bit. just so she, it could get some blood. Mm-hmm. So so that's just that's wild to me. Um but yeah, oh, that was, yes, that was a good one too there. I forgot about the little arm. Um, so yes. I love that this show seems to like keep hitting on like the stuff that was set up before. Again, like if you think about it, when they went to go, when they first went to go see Osisa, the, the, the female Sphinx. Yeah. Um, she kind of like broke them all down and like, oh, like here's your problem. Here's what's your, here's your biggest fear, et cetera. And like one of the ones that she says, like Scan was like, oh, I don't care about you. No one does. And like you see him like talking to the male Sphinx at this point, and he's just like, Yeah, I don't have anybody. Yeah. And like the Sphinx does that classic, like, maybe you should stop looking for love and let love find you. Which I was like, all right, I, okay, whatever. <laughs> well, I thought it was it was also funny. Um, what do you call it? How <laughs> Like, Scandalin really wants, like, he's yearning to get some type of, like, affection. And it's almost like this guy who's just searching for it in all the wrong places, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it's nice, because with the Finx telling him that, I wonder if that's going to um, to change his, his behavior, maybe? We'll see. I'm like really interested in Scanlan's growth as a character because there's just so many things that affect the way that he behaves. Like, you know, like, is he in love with Pike? Is Does he just want someone to love him? Like, uh, like the fact that he is of, of all members of Vox Machina, he's still probably the most self-serving. Like he's the one who's like, 
we don't need to do this. We're just a bunch of schmucks who yeah. like found ourselves like, you know, helping people. Um, this isn't our responsibility. Like he's like, he's still kind of like, like early game Peter Parker. Where he doesn't know what, what you want. Yeah. To do. <laughs> no, that that's very true. And I, I do find it. Um, I guess I always found it intriguing, like him and Pike's relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. That would be that'd be interesting if they if they end up together. That would be yeah, that'd be a weird one, but it'd be interesting. There's a lot of there's a lot of like coupling up on on this campaign where I'm like I don't know if I I don't know if I buy all this, but I feel like. In fairness, I feel like the show is doing better about it than the game was because like, oh, they're at least trying to lay they're at least trying to lay groundwork. There was like one time in the campaign where like someone's like, "Oh, I love you. I have oh, I always have." I was like, "Have you though?" <laughs> You're like, "Really?" Yeah. really? Yeah. No, that's no that's that's neat. No, I'm I'm like I would think we would have gotten like one filler episode by now and we we still haven't, which I'm yeah. like and realistically, like, we're now going to be hitting the back half of this show. So, I mean, I can, there's just so much that's still, like, you still have all the dragons. Mm -hmm. They still have to, you know, finish getting all the, all the, like, items. Like, I don't understand. I am looking forward to how they're going to accomplish this story. Because, oh. I mean. I, I hate to jump back to the last episode again, but like another thing I love, like which is classic for for D and D, is that when when uh, when Keyleth was like, "Oh, I want to, I need to go to Pyra because they're in danger," and uh, Vax was like, "We can't just like go off on every little side quest." Yeah, that presents itself. And I'm just like, I was like, "Oh man, you've never played D and D before, Vax." No, that's um, sad but true. Sad but true, and it always depends on your party. You only need one. You only, you only need, need one. one. Yeah, one one person who <laughs> wants to go everywhere. Yeah. Um. No, this was awesome. No, so yeah, I will say. Um. Yeah, this is still it's still rock solid, guys. Like we, you rock guys, solid. There you go. <laughs> no, this this we like. I'm I'm just I'm so impressed at how how good this show is still. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but no, I'll say uh, any other parting words, Mike, before we, we bounce out of here. No, let's, let's go check out the next episode as soon as we can. That's what I'm talking about. All right, fellas, as always, don't forget to like subscribe, drop a comment. Let us know what, what's been your favorite part of this series so far. Like we're, we're at the halfway mark. So what do you guys think about it? Like where, where are your guys' thoughts? Cause I mean, this is, um, this is getting good, you know. Who's and your I, favorite Fox Machina couple so far? Couple, <laughs> or who do you want to see get together? Put that in the comments. <laughs> yeah, this will be a fun one. Who are you but, shipping? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but on that note, guys, we will see you next time. So, as always, this is Jorge. We got Mike over here, and we'll catch you later. Peace. Peace.